So, hello and welcome back. In this and the next few parts of the series, I'm going to implement the method I described in the first part in R. And since that's a bit more complex model and consists of several steps, that will need a bit of care to get right. So let's get started. Okay, so let's have a look at the data. I have already downloaded that and stored it in a file called data. And the first thing is to have a look. So we have two columns here. One is called date and one is called cum for cumulative cases. And if we look at the start of the data, we can understand immediately that is a date and that's a cumulative count. And newest seems to be first. So we, the first thing we should do is we should sort the data by increasing date. So let's attempt that. So I go through the rows in increasing order of the date column. And then I leave the column empty here so that I get both columns. So if I do that, I modify data and now the oldest data is first. So it starts 6th of March with one death, then 7th of March, two and so on. And I want to do one more thing before I turn that into a plot. Namely, currently the date field is a string of type character. And there is a built-in data type for dates in R, so I want to convert that. And I think I can do that like this. Let me see. So data. Now data is dates. Okay, first attempt. Let's have a plot. So data date against data cumulative cases. And maybe we do a line plot. So we get that. That looks about right. So in around April, cases increase quickly, then there's a flat bit, and then cases increase quickly again. So what I want is I want to look at daily increases. So what I can do is I can type diff data cum to get the one step differences that if I type it correctly, gives daily cases. And you see, we ordered it that the recent data is last. So here we have 598, 529, 501. And here that is presumably a weekend. And here with a bit of luck, that is maybe the start of the decay caused by the second lockdown. So let's try to plot this. One problem is because I took the differences between steps, the vector is now one shorter. So I need to also modify my dates and take off the first date. And here I do differences of the cumulative data, which gives daily data. And I make the points a bit smaller because it will be very many. So that is the data we get. So x axis is date and y axis is death per day. Good. So you see what I already mentioned. The data is quite noisy. So my nice lines are not really visible in this plot. And Here's a steep increase, first peak, decay, flat bit, second increase, and maybe a decay. And down here, you see what I said about weekends. So there's always two low values and a few higher ones, two low ones, a few higher ones, two low ones, a few higher ones, and something funny is going on here. But let's not worry about this now. This is the data I'm working with. Now, my plan is to model C stretches and this stretch where it goes down as exponential increase or exponential decay. So what I want to do first is I want to do the same plot on a log scale. So to shorten that a bit, let's just say I write T for the dates and death for the value, or let's call it daily to make it look a bit friendlier. And then well, first we can do the old plot. So T and daily, that should not have changed anything. But now if I do log, equals y, I get a logarithmic y-axis. And if my model is right, there should be straight stretches in. And one could kind of see a steep stretch here, a flatter stretch here, another one here, and another one here, and maybe it goes flatter here or something like this. So I would think we see at least one, two, three, four, five stretches in here. And I would argue in particular the decay here does look stray on a log plot. So my assumption that it's exponential decay here and maybe exponential increase here and there is not observed. One could look in more detail, but that's what we're going to use for the model here. So this is the data. 
Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make a model for my logarithmic curve. I have my parameter vector theta, and from that I want to get these curves lambda. So how can I do this? Key observation is what we saw in the plot, namely that if I take a logarithm of y, that then my exponential segments turn into straight lines. And there is an R function which can help you to interpolate between points with straight line segments. So here, Aprox says, return a list of points which linearly interpolate given data points or a function performing the linear interpolation. I'll go for the points. Let's just try that out. So we're doing straight lines first. So if I say ti is, say, 1, 2, 5, I write ti because I've used t already, and the points on the y-axis I want to call a to match my notes from earlier. Let's say we go from 0 to 10 to 2. Then I can write approx, and now we need to learn how to do that. So I put here the points, numeric vectors giving the coordinates of the points being interpolated, so that is easy, ti and ai. And then x out allows me to evaluate the straight line at certain points, so the sequence from 1 to 5 in, say, 100 steps. I evaluate this at s and call that y. And if I now do a plot of s against y, I should see a straight line. And I made a mistake. We need here y x against y y. So that did what I wanted. Between times 1 and 2, it went up from 0 to 10 in a straight line. And then from 2 to 5, it went down from 10 to 2 in a straight line. So that's for straight line interpolation. And now I want to do that on a logarithmic scale. So I think I can just type that here. So lambda will be a function where I can plug in t values and the vector theta. Then I need to build up my time steps. And remember the first and last one we were modeling separately. So let's say s is changed to be the minimum of t, then I need to define k. k is how many segments we have. For now, let's just go with 5, because that's what we thought on the plot makes sense. So from 1 up to k minus 1, we set. And then the last point is always fixed to be the maximum of the data. So that's my s values. Then what I'm going to plug in here for the y values will be the logs of the data, so that I think I can call this ti, and then I can call this ai, and I match my notes. So that will be theta, here should have been a theta, k up to 2 times k. Hopefully these have the same length, I think they do. And then I need to use approx with the t values and the logarithms of the a values, and I plug in the given times here, and then I need to exponentiate again to go back to the actual scale. So I take the log, afterwards it's straight line, so I can use approx, and then I exponentiate, and then I'm back to actual daily values. Okay, how do we try that out? Now we need to find t values. Let's say the i is three random values between the minimum time and the maximum time. Did it work? It did work. You see the ti's appear down here as numbers. This is because dates in R are represented as numbers of days from some base time. I think it's number of days since the start of 1970 or so. And when I wrote minimum t and maximum t here, t is actually the dates, but then it needed numbers, so it converted them to this numeric days since the start of 1974. So I just picked three, and actually let's sort them, that they're in increasing order. And now ai is the y values, let's just look what the reasonable y value is. Values go a bit above 1000. 
let's just do randomly a high value. So we do 1200 and then a low value, say 10 and then a high value 500, just to match the plot a bit. Then from that, I need to build a theta, which is my three TIs. Oh, and I need to give all five values. So let's say we start with one and no, another 500, just that we have some values. So that has now length three and we add first and last value, so we get five. So it took me a while to sort out all of the problems here. I'm showing that with increased speed, but eventually I got something running. So here's some curve, but it's still not right. This time it worked. So the values are the ones I had here. I said I start low, I go high, I go quite low to 10, which may be there on the logarithmic plot, and then I have two points where it is 500. And the x values are just randomly chosen, literally randomly here. So it's okay that these don't match up with the data. So we didn't actually use the data when doing that. Okay, so we have a way to generate these curves lambda, and just let me double check if I do the original plot without the logarithm looks like this. And if I plot my curve in there, then the lines are now really exponential increase and exponential decay. The funny kink here is just because I should have chosen higher resolution. So if I do 200 steps here, then it gets a bit point here. Good, so that seems to work. Now, what do we need to do next? So the next step will be to choose a prior distribution on theta. We haven't done that yet. And we have now a sense of what are reasonable values. The A values, so the values at the nodes should be somewhere in the range from zero to 1200. And because of my exponential curves, I cannot actually have zero. So let's say they are from one to 1200. So if I do random theta, then I would think for AI, maybe we take them uniform in this plot. So what we do is range log daily. So there are a few zeros, which gives us a minus infinity. And then I said we start at one. So the minimum e to the zero is one, should be zero. And the maximum of the data, let's just use this. Let's write 7.1 here. And how many of these do we need? We need one more than intervals. I think our numbers are still off. that fixes one mistake. And for A, I need one value per node. So here for K equal five, we need a six values. So here I need K plus one values. And I say I do them uniform on the logarithmic scale, and then I exponentiate them. Then I need random T values, and we can just do what we did here. So we can do k minus one t values from the minimum to the maximum. So that's ti. And then we do this, or rather we don't need to assign it, so we can return it. Let's try that. So we do theta is run theta. And then I do my plot again, gives a random curve. If I take a new theta, then I get a new random curve. So again, we have not yet used the data, that is just random curves. We could make a clever model to force them to be more realistic, but I want to keep simple, so let's try to do that. Okay, with this, we can now generate samples from the prior distribution. And in order to implement the random walk metropolis algorithm, the next ingredient is we need the density of the prior distribution, and then we need to look at the posterior and so on, but we'll do that in the next video. So see you in the next video.